Hello, and welcome to the online Master of Communication Management Programs Area of Focus webin webinar presented by the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism from the University of Southern California. My name is Phil Saloria. I'm a graduate admissions advisor for the Master of Communication Management online program, and I will be your host for today's webinar. I would like to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. To begin, I'd like to review what you can expect during this presentation. In order to cut down on background noise, everyone is on listen-only mode. And if you're experiencing any technical difficulties, please be sure to refresh your browser. And if you have any questions for any of our speakers, please type them in the Q&A box in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and hit send. Feel free to enter any questions as you think of them, and we'll be sure to answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. Also, a copy of the presentation and recording will be available soon. So here's our agenda and a quick look at what we will be covering. First, I will be introducing Dr. Courtney Paid, Assistant Director of the Master of Communication Management Program. She will be discussing the program's areas of focus, some of the newer courses available, and what it means to be a student in the Master of Communication Management Program here at USC. So let's begin. Hi, Dr. Page. Thank you for joining us today. Hi. Thanks, Phil. Um, hi, everyone. I am Dr. Courtney Page, and I've been teaching in the program really since the beginning in 2010. I've been the assistant director of the program for the last few years, and I teach classes both online and on campus in research methods and marketing. I also have experience working with clients on consumer insights and audience analysis projects. Now I'd like to introduce Neil Tosheda, the Director of Online Learning at Annenberg. Thank you very much, Dr. Paid. And thank you once again to everyone that is taking time out of their busy schedules to attend our webinar today. Looking forward to sharing some helpful information about USC, the Annenberg School, and many of the outstanding elements of the Online Master of Communication Management including how you can start an application for our spring and summer semesters today. As Dr. Paid mentioned, I'm the Director of Online Learning for the USC Annenberg School, and I've been working at USC for nearly 20 years uh, in the distance learning, online learning environment. Uh, I've been working primarily with our graduate students. I'm also an alumnus of the Master of Communication Management program at Annenberg uh, when it was only on campus. Uh, so I've been very lucky and very proud to be a part of its evolution into the online program since 2010. So let's start off by talking a little bit about USC and the Annenberg School. USC was founded in 1880, back when LA was a small but growing Western outpost. Since then, the University of Southern California has grown to become one of the world's leading private research universities. USC has regularly enrolled more international students than any other American institution of higher learning and holds a research-based education that can be applied to professional practice as a cornerstone of its institution. In keeping with this, USC has long been a pioneer in distance education, offering master's level classes to professional engineers via satellite video as early as 1972. USC Annenberg School is proud to continue that pioneering tradition by offering our fully online MCM degree to communication professionals all over the world. USC's Annenberg School was founded in 1971 through the generosity and leadership of Ambassador Walter H. Annenberg. You may know him better as the creator of TV Guide, Seventeen Magazine, and through his family's long legacy of supporting public television and the arts. Today, USC Annenberg is renowned for its innovative approach to communication teaching and research and serves as an international hub for scholars and professionals in communication, public relations, journalism, public diplomacy, media, and education. The Online Master of Communication Management enables the USC Annenberg School to deliver the same high-quality educational experience in a rigorous, engaging, and collaborative way. By the way, that picture on the slide is of our 2018 graduating class of online MCM students attending our annual graduation barbecue prior to commencement. We also host an annual reception and tailgate for homecoming, and we're hoping that if health and safety conditions improve, we'll be doing these events again very, very soon. 
Before we discuss the program in more detail, I'd like to briefly share USC's accreditation and ranking information, which reflect the university and school's commitment to excellence in higher education. USC and the Online Master of Communication Management program have both been reviewed and accredited by WASC, and USC is currently ranked in the top 25 among national universities by US News and World Report. Additionally, the Wall Street Journal's comprehensive 2020 college rankings placed USC in the 18th spot nationally and third among all Western US institutions. And QS World University Rankings rated USC Annenberg the top institution for communication and media studies in the United States. Let's talk about the Master of Communication Management program and some of the advantages you'll have as an online USC Annenberg student. This program has been designed for both early career and experienced working professionals. Everyone you'll be taking classes with will play a role in your learning. You'll share your work experiences, we'll talk about issues that you are currently facing on your jobs, and you'll get as much out of the people you are going to classes with as you will from your instructors. Our program is done cohort style, which means that you will go through the program with a similar group of people over the course of your, course of your classes. Typically, each class is divided into sections of no more than 20 people. That doesn't mean that you'll have the same 20 people all the time, but everyone will have gone through the same core courses that you have gone through. You can complete this program in less than two years, 16 months to be exact. And this is important we found for working professionals. You have a lot on your plate. You have a lot of responsibilities at work, at home, and taking classes will add considerably to your workload. So we know that it's really important for you to get through this program as quickly as possible. And we think that completing the program two classes per term in about 16 months is the best way for you to achieve your goal of earning a master's degree from USC. So what does the MCM mean? This is a management degree for communication professionals. We operate from the understanding that communication is at the center of every enterprise and that communicators shape and change the world and that this degree is offered so that communicators like yourselves feel empowered to lead within your organizations. This is going to be a rigorous online program that you'll be able to immediately apply to your professional career. We don't want you to think that online and easy are synonymous. We want you to think that online is valuable and rigorous, challenging you to think and expand your perspectives. We have a state-of-the-art course design and learning platform integrated with social tools that encourage personal and professional networking. Feedback we've received from hundreds of students and graduates has been terrific. They're really getting what they want out of this program. The online learning management system that we use makes connecting with others in your class and with your professors extremely easy. You will have a network of people all around the country and in some occasions around the world, and you'll be able to maintain this network long after you've completed your program. Learning is phenomenal online because as we've experienced in the on-campus program, when you come to class for three hours, class works and moves at a particular pace, and you're forced to move at that pace. In the online program, you're actually able to cover far greater material at far, at far greater depths because you are working on it more incrementally. And of course, you'll also be working in groups and working with your colleagues in your cohort on a regular basis. We think that's an extraordinary advantage of our online learning program because the ability to work in virtual teams has become increasingly essential in the modern workplace. I'll briefly talk about some learning and career opportunities. Students in the online program will gain relevant skills that enable them to analyze complex business problems, utilize critical thinking, presentation or advocacy techniques, gather and analyze research to improve decision-making throughout their organization, and to create communication that is geared toward the global perspective as necessary. Graduates are optimally positioned for careers in all sorts of fields, particular management consulting, training and development, public relations, advertising, promotion, business and marketing, and so many more. We have so many alumni that are now part of our online degree program that have gone on to advance their careers through networking that, that they built in this program. For example, we had one classmate who got recruited to work at Ketchum as a digital strategist uh, simply by being part of a, a team uh, in one of their communication management program courses. We also have regularly groups create strategic communication pitches and branding pitches as part of our integrated marketing communication courses who, uh, when they are decided to be the best among the class, uh, have an opportunity to pitch to companies all over the U.S. 
So you're really going to put what you're learning into practice. And to talk more about our curriculum and the courses that you'll be taking, I'll hand it back over to Dr. Courtney Page. Great. Thanks, Neil. Uh, so all students in the Master of Communication Management will be exposed to many different topics within this field, such as strategic and organizational communication, marketing communication, and market research and analytics. And on this slide, you can see the foundational core that all students will take. So the first one listed uh, 500 management communication. You will cover topics and theories in the area of organizational structure and small group and team communication, and also social networks. In 540, uses of communication research, you will learn how to conduct systematic research through methods like focus groups, surveys, and qualtrics, and content analysis. So you're actually collecting your own data. And then in 502, you will learn how to tailor your communication to include all stakeholders within and outside your organization. As a note, you can see there's a note here too, uh, we expect all students to take a market research and analytics course. And we thought long and hard about this. This is because we know that these market research and analytics classes are increasingly important to professionals, really in all fields. And the ability to conduct analysis and research is a critical part of your educational foundation. Uh, at the bottom here, you'll see uh, the two capstone options. Uh, the first is the capstone course option. This is a course that provides enough flexibility to be useful regardless of what area of focus you end up choosing. And then the second option is the practicum. And you can choose this if you have a really special project in mind, something that you want to exit your master's degree um, having completed. And in this practicum, you work closely with a faculty member across two semesters or completing it in one semester to finish this project. Here on this slide, you'll see our areas of focus. Marketing communication, strategic and organizational communication, and market research and analytics. And this gives a quick summary of each one. But it is worth noting right now that you don't have to choose an area of focus if you want a more generalist option. And in the next few slides, I'll go into each of these areas of focus in more depth. So the first area of focus is um, marketing communication. And we put this first maybe because it's the nearest and dearest to my heart because I'm, well, I'm the head of this track. So in this track, uh, you go into areas such as persuasion, consumer behavior, cultural studies, and we really try to make sure students have a better understanding of all parts of the industry, uh, such as digital media, branding, and global campaigns. And all areas of focus uh, that you'll see on these slides include three additional courses, um, in addition to the ones that were listed in the previous slide. So for marketing communication, here are the courses included in, in this area of focus. Uh, 541, Integrated Marketing, this I like to think of as a foundational course, um, and actually Neil mentioned that in passing too. And here you'll work on a semester-long project to create an integrated marketing plan from start to finish. Uh, I'm currently teaching that class this semester. I'm the course director for it. And so we're working um, on the brands Adidas, The Honest Company, Las Vegas Raiders, and Coke with Coffee. And I work with the section instructors to choose these brands because they all have unique challenges up ahead of them. And a fun fact about this course is that we have an executive in residence, um, Brandon Roshan, who is the CCO at Castor and Partners in Los Angeles. And Castor is Red Bull's agency of record. So Brandon comes in and you know, really uh, provides that industry, real life experience and examples. And he gives three guest lectures and ends up judging the final project competition. Uh, the next course, 556, or Global Marketing Communication, uh, in this class, you'll focus on introducing a brand or a product of your choosing into a new country. Um, so here, really understanding the cultural, political um, components of introducing a brand or product. And uh, our, one of our newest courses, uh, 589 here, is Storytelling, Culture, and Experiential Communication. Uh, in this course, you'll Students learn different types of storytelling, including social cause storytelling and narratives and branding yourself, which is really important, um, and narrative theories. And in the last couple of semesters that this has been taught, they've worked um, with industry clients, uh, one being Barbie and Mattel, and then another one also being Red Bull for this class. 
we can yeah. And here's our second area of focus, strategic and organizational communication. And as Neil said, we know communication is the tie, well, that binds everything together, but ties organizations together. Um, and this track covers leadership, team communication, and managing change in crises. The first course listed here, 505, Communication in the Work Setting, uh, we think of this as our micro-organizational uh, communication course. So how do you interact with people on a one-to-one -one and small group basis in work settings? In, in this class, culture, socialization, giving and taking feedback, bullying, and leadership are all covered. The next course, 508, Communicating Strategy and Change. How do you communicate and implement change in organizations? And how do you handle resistance and organizational inertia? And the final class, 599, is our newest course being offered this spring, is Crisis Management. So in this class, you understand that crisis is even more important now um, with how quickly information disseminates. Um, we're certainly living through a crisis at the moment, or multiple crises if you're in California. And in this class, you get an in-depth understanding of how to prepare and manage crises, and, and uh, all organizations will face them. So this, I think, is an important skill for any student coming into our program. Let's go on to the next area of focus. Uh, marketing research, market research and analytics. Uh, now that we have access to an unbelievable amount of data, how do we manage it and how do we communicate its underlying story? Uh, and in this track, you'll have three courses here. The first one, 555, uh, online marketing communication. Um, in this class, uh, it's more of a cultural studies course where you analyze how people interact online. And based on that knowledge, what can organizations and brands gain from it um, once you know how people um, think about influencers or how they look at consumer communities? In 587 Audience Analysis, uh, this is a client-based class. So a client brings a real-life problem to the students, and we spend the entire semester collecting and analyzing uh, data uh, in order to understand consumer behavior, to make actionable recommendations. So some of the, I teach this class too, so I have lots of examples here, but some of the past classes have dealt with um, Neutrogena. They were a client, they came in, um, and they asked the question, why aren't more people buying sunscreen? That the household penetration has been steady across decades, and they just can't understand. So our students went and looked at uh, different segments to figure out why they're not buying more sunscreen. Another project was Prime Sport, and this is a ticket company, a ticket broker. And they wanted to understand what types of ticket hotel packages would appeal to millennials, since that's their main business. Another semester we worked with Vetted, a mobile pet service, a mobile um, vet company. And they wanted to educate pet owners on wellness checkups um, and how to get people to trust a mobile service when maybe they've you know, been going to the same vet for a number of years. And finally, the last time I taught it, we worked with One Love. Um, it's a nonprofit organization focused on promoting healthy relationships and teens. And they were asking, how do we talk to young men about abuse in relationships? They, they were, had really great success talking to young women, but were struggling talking to young men. And so the class went out and tried to solve these problems. And another new course here, uh, 564, Big Data in Communication. Um, this is another client-based class. And they work with a client looking at their existing large data set. So in 587, the students go out and collect data, whether it's focus groups or surveys. In this, they look at existing big data sets. Um, so this is our more advanced methods option, but with a focus on how to communicate a story through data. And finally, we have our generalist option. Um, we know some students come in without a specified area of focus that they're interested in, um, and they're looking for a broader skill set or exposure to many different topics and possible career paths. Uh, this is the generalist option, and you take the same core and capstone classes like other students, um, but instead of digging deep into those area of focus, you take uh, one marketing course, one market research course, and PR courses to get a broader look of these topics and industries. So with all of the coursework combined, both the core and these uh, more elective courses, we expect our generalists to take two courses in these four communication areas. Strategic organizational, marketing, market research and analytics, and public relations. So now that I've covered the curriculum, I'm going to hand it off to Phil to talk about the next steps for those who are interested in learning more about the program or for starting an application.
Phil? Thank you, Courtney, and thank you, Neil. So, regar so regarding our admissions requirements, just so everyone knows, the entire application is available online, and you really just want to make sure to request all of your, transcri your official transcripts from every school that you've attended. Also, just know that the GRE or the GMAT is also required. However, students that have full-time professional work experience may qualify for the GRE waiver. So please be sure to reach out to your advisor so that we can help you determine if you would be eligible for the waiver. Another part of the application process is to complete a statement of purpose along with a writing sample, and all students will need to submit a resume showcasing all professional work experience along with two letters of recommendation. I do want to share some admission tips. So communication with your enrollment advisor is an important first step, I would say. We are here to support you throughout the application process all the way into your first week of classes. Also, as Neil mentioned, just a quick note for students that are looking to get started in the upcoming semester, there's still time to apply. If you're worried about not having enough time to take the GRE for those that are required to take the GRE, just reach out to us we can go over some possible options that you might be eligible for. Also, don't forget, students can qualify for the GRE waiver, GRE waiver just based on experience. Another good tip is just to make sure that you're following the deadline, deadlines and the due dates in order to submit your application in a timely fashion. And as always, make sure to reach out to one of us with any questions that you might have. Next, I really want to just take some time to go over any questions that anyone might have. We did receive a few already, so if you have any questions, please be sure to share them in your Q&A box so I can make sure that we are able to address those and we'll get to as many as we can. We do have one already here. Um, are you able to take courses from the from two focus areas? I'll take that question, Phil. Uh, the answer is that our focus areas are designed to allow students to focus deeply in one particular area. So uh, for those students who are interested in courses that are cut across, you would want to speak to an advisor and uh, once you're in the program, uh, select the generalist track where we have some more flexibility to carve out a schedule that makes sure that you're able to take the courses from marketing communication, market research and analytics, and strategic organizational communication uh, so that you, you get the courses that you're most interested in. One caveat is that the availability of certain courses are seasonal. We only offer certain courses once a year, depending on when you're admitted and the amount of time that you're taking to finish your degree, say full-time versus part-time, Certain courses may be available sooner or later, uh, but our academic advisors will work with you as a generalist to try to slot in the courses that are most valuable to you as a professional. It's also important for me to mention that you do not have to select your area of focus upon application to the program. That's a decision that you'll make during your first semester in the program. So after you're admitted to the MCM program, You'll be taking your core courses, that those were 540, 500 in your first term or terms. And once you've completed those core courses, uh, or once you're in the semester finishing your core courses, you'll be able to identify what area of focus it is that you want to select. So this is not a, something you have to know in advance. It's something you can discover uh, while you're a student in the program. Thank you, Neil. We do have another question. Um, do online students have the same access to campus resources as on-campus students do? Absolutely. Uh, one of the great 
advantages of a university like USC is that we've done tremendous work to provide access for our online graduate students to campus resources, whether those be in person or virtually. For example, uh, for many, many years now, before even you know, the COVID pandemic, we have been enabling online students who are outside of the LA area or even those who are in the LA area to receive materials from our libraries via mail, prepaid postage both ways. So if there is a material that's not available digitally in our USC libraries and it cannot be made digitally available to you, and it's not, um, say, a very special antique resource that can't be shipped, uh, they will actually take a book off the shelves and put it and package it for you to have as a learning resource for your courses. Additionally, if, uh, if and when we can return to playing football and athletic events on campus, you as an online student are eligible to take advantage of uh, athletic uh, discounts and uh, specials for students and any other activities and events that are being held on campus for the USC general public. Thank you, Neil. I, I, I do have a, another question here. Uh, what is the, uh, and I do get this all the time, but what is the maximum number of unit courses full student, full-time students can uh, take per semester? Um, and are there any options for an accelerated type of program? Typically, students will take no more than two courses a term. That's eight units total, so two four-unit courses. Um, we discourage students from taking more than that because it is a huge load. However, once you're in the program and you know, once you're probably past your first semester and we can evaluate performance, you can petition the program director, Dr. Rebecca Weintraub, uh, who will also, I'm sure, will loop in Dr. Courtney Paid, and an evaluation can be made as to whether or not uh, an exception is allowed. Um, we, we are not doing this because we don't want you to accelerate your program. We're doing this because we know that the load of two courses in itself is significant for a full-time working professional. So if you have a very specific reason why you need to take more than two courses in a term, um, and we can make a course plan that works for that purpose, and your faculty in your first semester feels that uh, you were able to handle the load well, um, we can have a discussion about exceptions to the two-course maximum. Dr. Pay, do you want to add anything to that about your experiences with uh, three courses at a time? Uh, thanks, Neil. I agree with everything you said there, that three courses is a very heavy load. Um, and I think even on campus it's a heavy load and online, um, given the coordination costs with your team, that you're most likely working part or full time at the same time, um, have family obligations, um, you know, like Neil said, we discourage it. Um, but if you have been shown successful in the program um, in previous classes, I think it's something that we can consider. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Courtney. Um, another question here is, uh, Neil, since you've taken the program in person and obviously and have experienced it online as well, how do you feel the online program compares? It's a great question and one I have absolute confidence in answering. Uh, the online program is as rigorous and demanding and engaging and uh, full of networking opportunities as the on-campus program, if not more. And I say that because as an on-campus student, my experience was that I loved the courses, I loved the faculty, I loved my classmates. The reality was I only attended class typically once a week from the hours of 6.30 to 9.20, and those were exhausting hours. You know, there were challenges with just getting to uh, class after work, dealing with traffic and, and challenges around that, or just having a lot of work to do and scrambling to get to class. Um, and then during those three and a half hours, you're trying to cram in as much as possible in lecture content that by the time class is over, you're exhausted, and no one really wants to stick around to network, what they, run, what they would rather do is just go home as quickly as possible and grab a bite before going to sleep. And so there were limitations on the ability to engage, and there were limitations on the ability to digest the content. 
And so even though the on-campus program is still geared and was geared towards working professionals by having courses in the evening, I think the online program just does a much better job of letting professionals especially stretch out the work throughout the week. And because of the tools that we provide and the way that all of our courses are designed around collaborative work, group work, uh, and that's at the core of so many of our courses and assignments, that you really get to know each other very well. In fact, I will say that we have had dozens of students who have told me that they've built lifelong friendships from this program, and that's not just professional networking relationships. We're, we've had a lot of students who have hired other students. We've had alumni who come back to events and network and you know, recruit talent. Uh, but we've also had folks who have become great friends. So we've, we've also had some folks who had children who've come out of the program together. Uh, we had one person who presided over the other's wedding. Uh, so these, these are great examples of uh, the kind of relationships that are built out of the online program. And I would say that if you are a working professional or you're a professional of any kind who is seeking to gain advanced skills and also develop a, a strong network that will last, the online program is going to be a great opportunity for you. Thank you, Neil. And um, I, I think it's a, this is another question kind of very similar to that with online learning. I mean, how do we have the opportunity to network with USC alumni? I think you're going to have far more opportunities now than before. We used to have uh, alumni events in person. And so for students who wanted to attend events and, and meet our alumni and meet alumni from across Annenberg, you, they primarily were alumni events uh, in the flesh, so to speak. Uh, however, now almost all of USC's uh, events have been virtualized. So if, if USC is hosting an event or a networking opportunity for alumni, whether it's at the Annenberg School or across campus, uh, these events are now virtual. And so I feel that uh, students are going to have a greater opportunity to network with alumni. Um, and through Annenberg specifically, we're launching a, um, networking, up, a networking program for alumni and, st and current students um, so that you have a designed program that seeks to do that, to connect you with other professionals in your industry who either have recently graduated or have been working in that field for some time that have a connection to the Annenberg School. So, I say with great confidence that we're going to be offering many more opportunities to engage with alumni, not just of this program, but of the Annenberg School writ large uh, through these design programs for mentorship, but also through um, more programming and events uh, that give you an opportunity to meet and talk with um, our alumni through vehicles like Zoom and other virtual presentations. Thank you, Neil. Um, we do have another question here. Do you have any, I think, cases dealing with politics or polling? I can jump in there. Um, we don't have any courses specifically focused on politics or polling, but many of our courses do allow flexibility for you to choose your own topic or um, or I guess research agenda. Uh, for example, in the core class 540 and focus group module, you can you can choose a political topic and you'll, you can run your focus group on that and write up your paper on that topic. Um, and I believe the crisis communication class is still being um, put together, the syllabus, um, but that is something that we can give feedback to, um, to the professor if there's interest in that area. Neil, do you have anything to add there? Very briefly, uh, so in our public relations courses, there are topics that focus on um, writing for political contexts. Uh, this is just examples that are drawn from, from those two courses, but uh, there are occasions where you're uh, trying to deal with responding to a critical situation on Twitter that may be you know, an entertainment complex or a context or a political context, uh, but no courses that outright uh, focus exclusively on, on political context. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Neil. Um, and again, if you do have any more questions, please put them into the Q&A box. Um, it looks like we've answered a 
the majority of the the questions here. Um, Neil and Courtney, do you have any maybe final thoughts you'd like to share? I think this I is a, a really exciting that... time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Neil. Go ahead. No, no, no. Please finish, Courtney. I guess Phil was just asking for final thoughts, and I, I was saying that I think this is just a really exciting time um, to be learning online. Um, you know, given that our current university is all online learning and that this program has a long history of teaching online, um, I think this is a wonderful opportunity uh, to take these classes given this ever-changing environment. I mean, what seems more applicable than communicating strategy and change than right now? Um, so that, I, I think Neil was saying that there's some other questions you wanted to answer before final thoughts. I noticed a couple of questions just about uh, the structure of the program. So this is a year-round program. It's fall, spring, and summer. So you have an upcoming admission period for spring beginning in January and another admission period after that uh, in early May. Um, and then we just finished our uh, fall intake in, uh, in September. And we had a tremendous response for our fall cohort. Um, and I think largely because folks wanted an online experience that provided them the flexibility uh, to you know, adapt to the changes that they're experiencing personally and professionally, but also something that was mature, that had been online for a long time, that hadn't just turned online overnight. And uh, we heard from so many applicants that they found a tremendous amount of relief in knowing that the Annenberg School that USC had offered uh, this degree since 2011 that this was something that was mature, that had its own alumni, and that it was designed specifically for professionals uh, looking for exactly that type of experience. So we just want to keep want you to keep in mind that you know this is not an online program that was on campus last semester and just became online. Uh, this program has been online since 2011, and the program itself, the Master of Communication Management, is the oldest graduate program from the Annenberg School, dating back to the early 70s. Uh, so this is something that has a lot of experience behind it, incredibly talented professional faculty uh, with professional experience as well as academic experience. And I think that if you're looking for the flexibility and the ability to choose an area or be a generalist, the Master of Communication Management is going to give you a lot of what you're looking for. That's great. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Um, Neil, any other questions in there, uh, there that you might not have been able to answer? One quick question. I, someone asked, I've had my own production company for 20 years. Fantastic. This is great. What kind of references would I provide? Would I ask my clients? I would speak to an enrollment advisor just to get their, their take on this because we've had experiences with folks who have you know, been their own boss for decades as yourself. And, and typically when we're looking for references, yes, we're looking for someone who could provide a neutral, unbiased reference to attesting to your professionality, uh, the delivery of your work product, uh, et cetera. And so it's, it's important for our faculty who review the applications to get a sense of what you've done professionally as well as what you've done academically. So if you have an academic reference, a professor that you recently had in a class and you want to use them as a reference, that's great. But typically, we're looking for someone as well uh, from the professional field who's not your peer, uh, that's in a supervisory role, or if you've been in your own boss for many years, then someone who can provide an unbiased uh, uh, attestment to your, your work ethic and quality of delivery. I think that's it for me. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Courtney. Um, if we didn't get to your specific question, we'll be, re, uh, be sure to reach out to you on a one-on-one -on -one situation. Um, we'll be sure to um, answer any questions that you might have. So at this time, I would really just like to uh, thank Neil and thank you, Courtney, for sharing this information on the university and the program. It really does mean a lot to us. And we'd like to thank everyone that is attending our live sessions and Hopefully you have a better understanding of what the Master of Communication Management program does entail.
and we hope that it helps you with your decision process. Thank you both so much again. And just a reminder, a copy of this recording and slide presentation will be available in the next following days. Again, thank you for joining us. We hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.